So this is it disassembled. I'm gonna show you how you can get to this point and easily rebuild yours as well. The hardest part are the snap rings. So go and make sure you have a good snap ring uh, pliers to take these apart. This is that shaft that I was talking about. And you can see that nut was at the top. When you spin this nut, it's, or I'm sorry, when you spin the, the screw there, you, you relieve the locking nut, you spin the screw with an Allen key, it pushes this up and down. And these teeth mesh with a piston, which I have right here, uh, right on the end of it. I'm gonna take it out of the plastic, are the teeth that splines with. You see right there, like that. And as you push that up and down, that screw, it's moving it up and down where it engages there. And these teeth are a little wider at the top. So that will give you some play as well as perhaps if you have some issue with the seals and the valve or what have you. They're actually very simple and robust. Uh, this one here is a four bolt valve cover. Let me show you what I mean. We're gonna turn it over. One, two, three, four four bolts. And so it's a little bigger, a little beefier, a little better in my opinion. This is the referred to as the 680 gear. I don't know if it requires a little less turning. It's maybe less effort. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's called the 680 gear. Both of them are advertised as three turns stop to stop. Um, and these are found in the light duty trucks. I actually really like this because there's a number of rebuild videos for the Saginaw 800 gearbox. And I think some of the trucks from GM may use something similar or the, that actual box, but it requires you to set the preload on this end of the piston. I, I, I might have my terminology wrong. It requires you to set that as well as the gear lash. This one, you just adjust the gear lash and you're done. So um, hopefully this is just kind of an intro video we'll do and then we'll jump into things. GoPro, stop recording. So this is our gearbox. I've pulled it off my 2001 uh, Z71 Tahoe. Uh, on this side, we have the cover for the valve body. Here is the Pitman shaft. This is what turns your steering here. I'm going to first take off the cover for the valve body. I highly recommend getting one of these little magnetic trays, especially for this job, because there are little check balls in here we're gonna have to deal with, and you can't lose any of those. Otherwise, uh, your project is done. Okay. And don't recommend sticking a screwdriver or anything in here. Um, it may be stuck pretty good, uh, if you can't even turn yours, what you can do is, uh, I can spin mine, um, is you can uh, find an area like this right here, get yourself a extension or something that isn't too sharp, and we're not gonna go crazy here. We're just gonna, I call them love taps, give it a few little love taps. And then when you can open this up, get yourself, this is called a PB Blaster. Spread just a little in there and let it settle out. We got an O-ring that sometimes can uh, get dried out and bound up and that sort of thing. So um, now I'm just gonna get this off. And here's that O-ring I was talking about right there. There should be another one right here. We're gonna replace all this stuff. There's your uh, bearing for the input shaft and there's a seal on top of that there. Those all come in your rebuild kit. Here uh, we have the piston behind here. This is your valve body right here. There's four Teflon rings and then a fifth back here on the end. And those all will have to be replaced. I'll show you how to do that. So right here we have a snap ring that is retaining the end of the, uh, the piston in place. Uh, this may be a little bit uh, stubborn to get out. These are very, this is a very tight snap ring. 
not gonna lie here, this was very difficult. Perhaps a good pair of snap ring pliers would have made a big difference. I don't know if mine are very good or not. However, I spent a long time trying to get this snap ring out. Eventually, the uh, a paint can opener did the trick. Uh, these There's two snap rings in here. The second one isn't too bad. This one is very difficult. This is by far the hardest part of the project. You can get this off. You'll have zero problem rebuilding this thing. There it is, it's coming out. Oh, holy cow. That was the hardest one I've ever done. So I wanna make note, the chamfer, the curve, goes to the outside. It sets on here like this, and this edge is curved down. The uh, back side, which goes against here, is flat. I'm gonna put that on my uh, dish here. And we can't quite pull this out yet. We have to remove the uh, Pittman shaft. And I didn't mention before, but all these are 15 millimeter bolts. Put those on my deal here. She's stuck pretty good. Um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna find a lip. We got a little lip right there. I'm gonna use the edge of this uh, extension and see if I can't give it a few, as I call, uh, love taps. Or you can hit on the end of the Pittman shaft if you're thinking. Um, first, I wanna take this off. This is the, uh, the boot. I don't think it'll get sucked in there, but you want to try and preserve this boot. You may or may not be able to find one. Set that by my stuff here. Just a few more, as we call them, love taps, and she's out. Okay, so we're going to inspect the teeth on here. And they appear to be pretty good. I'm not entirely sure what these little marks are about here. And here's our uh, get up. A rag here. Wipe this up. This is our O-ring that seals this guy up. So we'll uh, we'll clean this guy up later. Put him right there. And now this will come out. But I want you to note. I'm gonna flip this over. There's a piston in here with some teeth on it. That's what engages the. Uh, Pitman arm, but if you pull this out, I'm not entirely sure how this one works. We want to be careful because inside of this assembly are check balls. Let's see if I can't get it to turn all the way over. I'm trying to find them. Um, it's very slippery in there, obviously. I don't know if you can get a good view inside that. I might get a better grip with my bare fingers here. Uh, here we go. Just trying to turn this around. It obviously turned it the wrong way before. So, oh, here we go. There it is. So, I don't know how well this is showing up on camera here. I'm going to get my, uh, I've got a little light here. I don't know if this will help. Side up here, we have uh, this little tube, which is cut in half, and two nuts. And running in that tube are check balls. And you'll see in just a second, there's like a worm gear on this shaft, the valve body shaft, which engages with those check balls and allows you to turn. This is your steering input. Pretty cool. And down below, while we're in here, this is your pitman um, towards the back here. Let me put the light on it. The light is shining on the needle bearings for the Pittman uh, bearing. And then we have two seals retained by, actually this top one here. This is an out, outer seal. And then there's a snap ring. We'll pop this out really quick. I may have to recycle this uh, outer here, right here, because uh, I broke the one from the kit, being silly. There we go. So I, I got it out without too much trouble there. We're gonna set it by our stuff here. And now see, we got a snap ring here. 
snap ring right in front of me there and another um, seal, there's a washer on top of the snap ring, another seal behind that. So come up with a strategy here. I'm just gonna be very, very careful as I pull this out. Watch here, these check balls, let me grab my magnet pin. Check balls are gonna wanna go everywhere. I'm gonna put my magnet here. You hear them, you can hear them falling in there. And this is why it's so vitally important. I almost lost that one. <laughs> you have this tray here, because if you lose one of these check balls, you have to order a bunch more, but they don't really sell these. You have to measure them, I suppose, and order them off of eBay, which I've done before, or Amazon or wherever. And um, your project will be sunk for a little while. Maybe a few left in that uh, tube. I don't know if this piston will come out with that tube on it. I guess it will. What do you know? So the back side right now, there's a Teflon seal on the back side of this piston that's, that's kind of holding us up right here. Um, let me, we're almost down to the bare body here. I'm gonna take these bolts off here. I lied to you earlier, I said everything's a 15. Those are probably, uh, I don't know, are those a 10? Those are tens. So we'll take those off really quick. And then we'll inspect these parts. So much for my gloves, right? I always get partway into a project and then I ditch the gloves and, uh, and my hands get real dirty putting these again on my magnet tray there. And as I told you, this tube is like a half, cut in half, right there. Just wanna make really careful that I didn't miss a count or lose any of the, uh, any of the check balls. Um, so we're gonna start working on this uh, snap ring here, which I noticed is broken. Uh, the this is going to be a little bit interesting to get out. One second. This tip where you engage the uh, snap ring pliers is uh, busted. Uh, good news is the kit I bought comes with a new snap ring for here. So see if I can't, yeah, it's going to be an adventure. All right. Uh, if you don't have a set of mechanic picks, these come in handy all the time. And you're going to see my messy uh, drawer here. I don't know if this will catch that little hole. I'm, not, I'm waging the snap ring war on this project, and I don't know if I'm winning or, or losing. This, this is really hard. Dear Lord. You just got to get these guys mostly out of the land, and then they'll, they'll come up. And... You know, this bore, I'm not terribly worried about scratching because it's, uh, it's not critical. It's not a, this part, the bottom part up here, you don't want to scratch. Um, got it out. Uh, this part just is going to seal the outside, uh, the inside from the outside. <laughs> the other side seals the outside, inside from the outside. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So there's a snap ring, a washer, and then this guy is in here. Um, the lip, look, so this is a flat side. This is not the side that's uh, sealing and not holding things out. It's the side that's got the lip that holds things out. And this first one goes in like that with the lip facing out. The second one's the opposite way around. It's holding the oil and everything inside of here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over and I don't know if I'll be able to get this on camera. Right down here, we have the edge of that seal. So I need to get a flat blade screwdriver being very careful of this uh, bearing. I, you can buy those, but they're really expensive and hard to find. We're just, again, love taps. And it, it'll, it'll come out, it'll probably destroy the, uh, 
the bear, the, the seal, but you'll get it out. She's coming right out. Flip this over and take a look right there. We, we have it, got it out. So again, look, the seal here has the lip up where, the way I'm holding it. That lip goes facing in with the bottom seal. It's, it's important you remember that. Uh, now it's fully dismantled. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this guy up and paint it so we can get the, the uh, rebuild kit in here and, and get this back on my truck. Take a look, let's, let's uh, for the heck of it, where'd my little flashlight go here? See, this is just a cylinder bore and that piston uh, gets pressure in here via this uh, valve here somehow, I don't know. <laughs> and it uh, pushes that piston back and forth in the bore. And that's what uh, gives you the power uh, assistance with turning to your wheel. So it's, it's, it's pretty simple. This is a very simple system. Um, you can watch some other YouTube videos or whatever to see exactly how it works, but we're just rebuilding it here. So this is, a, I call it the valve cover. I don't know if that's the correct terminology. I forgot to press out the seal in here. So we're gonna do that really quick. And it, I believe it comes from the top here. Uh, the bearing will come with it. That was a 19 millimeter socket. And out she came. Uh, of course, this lip here, this actually looks like a double seal. There's a lip here that comes back up and through and that lip will, um, <laughs> I can't quite do it, will be setting in here like this. This lip will be sticking out. I've never taken this off. This is the um, locking screw for the set, uh, locking nut for the set screw on the pitman arm. Let's see if we can't uh, take that off. The uh, kit comes with a, a new nut. And this one, I don't know if this will come off now, will it? may come off now. Yep, it's spinning right out of there. So, let's see this fully disassembled. Ooh, we got more mess. I just cleaned this poor guy up too. Uh, just try and wipe that with my rag a little bit. Um, doesn't appear to be any more seals in here. That is the Pittman shaft, and this is the cap. And we're gonna take this cap and do some stuff with it here before we start reassembling everything. So I'm gonna remove these old Teflon seals. Now be very careful that you, one, you don't cut yourself, and two, you don't uh, damage the part. Get, get out my pick here from my messy tool cabinet. Because this underneath has a O-ring. I need a pick to get it out with. So it doesn't quite want to get it. Here we go. Oh, it broke. There we go. Got it out. the side. Now we're going to remove these Teflon seals. Very slippery, so be careful. Okay, let's see if these will come out now. One. Old Teflon seals are off. Throw them in the garbage. I've never taken the snap ring off before, so kind of curious. Uh, might be a bad idea, but let's see what's inside of here if this comes apart. Doesn't seem to really have any effect. Hmm. I guess uh, if anybody knows what that does, just leave a comment below. Uh, inside of here is the, va the valve system, or plumbing at least, and, uh, huh, 
Yeah, I don't know if there's another seal in there you're supposed to do or, or not. Just put that back on there.